Today's thought is focus on where you want to go, not on what you fear. Good morning students. Welcome back. I hope all of you are safe and fit at home, studying well and completing your work on time. This video is for the students of class 8, subject English. And today, in this video, we are going to cover one chapter of our textbook that is Honeydew. This is our chapter number 7 and the name of the chapter is A Visit to Cambridge. It is written by none other than the famous writer Firdos Kanga. This is my lecture number 1 of the same chapter. This chapter is taken from Honeydew book. Students, in this video, today we shall learn about the author, main objectives and key points along with detailed explanation and word meanings of the chapter. After then, we shall discuss the homework solution of the homework which was assigned to you in lecture number 2 of chapter 16 that is the conjunction. Before start reading the chapter in detail, let me tell you about the author first. Firdos Kanga was born in 1960 at Mumbai in India and presently living at London in England. His genre of writing are documentary and fiction biography. His best known work is Trying to Grow, turned into the award-winning film that is Sixth Happiness. He has won Emma Award for his film Sixth Happiness. So before start reading the chapter in detail, first of all let's see what are the main objectives of this chapter. Number one is to aware the students that Physical disability is not a hurdle in individual growth. Number two is to create scientific thinking among the students. Number third is to aware about their surrounding and having respect to all. Number fourth is to create curiosity among the students to get information about disability or disabled people. So now let's see what are the main key points of the chapter. This is the story of a meeting between two extraordinary people both of them disabled or differently abled. Stephen Hawking is one of the greatest scientists of our time. He suffers from a form of paralysis that confines him to a wheelchair and allows him to speak only by punching buttons on a computer which speaks for him in a machine like voice. Firdos Kanga is a writer and journalist who lives and works in Mumbai. Kanga was born with beetle bones that tended to break easily when he was a child. Both of them move in a wheelchair. The two great men exchange thoughts on what it means to live life in a wheelchair and on how the so-called Normal people react to the disabled. So before start reading the chapter, let us see the introduction first. The author of A Visit to Cambridge is Firdos Kanga. He was a journalist and had traveled all over the world. He was also handicapped but he never let that become his disability in any way. Also he was an inspiration to the people around him. In the story the author shares one of his experiences in England. The author describes his visit to Cambridge University where he got a chance 
to interview Stephen Hawking. Hawking told him that he found it funny when people patronized him. He also added that he was not left with any choice other than being brave and accept his condition. The author found Stephen Hawking to be one of the most beautiful men in the world. At the end of the interview, Hawking gave a bit of advice to the handicapped people to concentrate on what is good in them. They can thus surely succeed in life. So this was a small introduction of the chapter. A question arises, what it means to life in a wheelchair and on how the so-called normal people react to the disabled. To know about this, let us read the chapter in detail. Cambridge was my metaphor for England. Metaphor means a thing regarded as representative or symbolic of something else. And it was strange that when I left, it had become altogether something else because I had met Stephen Hawking there. Means the author begins by telling the readers that at some point in life England only meant Cambridge for him and nothing more. He further remarked that after his meeting with Stephen Hawking, the meaning and relevance of England in his life changed completely. It was on a walking Tour, though Cambridge that the guide mentions Stephen Hawking, poor man, who is quite disabled now, though he is a worthy successor to Isaac Newton, whose share he has at the university. Means, the author mentions that he happened to be on a walking tour through Cambridge when his guide spoke about Stephen Hawking. The guide called him a poor man because he was differently abled. He even told the author that Stephen Hawking now holds the position in this or in the university which was earlier held by Isaac Newton. And I started because I had quite forgotten that this most brilliant and completely paralyzed astrophysicist, astrophysicist means scholar of astrophysics, branch of physics dealing with stars, planets, etc. The author of A Brief History of Time, one of the biggest bestsellers ever lived here, means the author reveals that before the guide had mentioned he had forgotten that Stephen Hawking, most brilliant and completely paralyzed astrophysicist, the author of one of the biggest bestsellers ever, A Brief History of Time, lived here. When the walking tour was done, I rushed to a phone booth and almost tearing the cord so it could reach me outside. Phoned Stephen Hawking's house. There was his assistant on the line. Means, once the walking tour came to an end, the author hurried to the nearest phone booth and stretched the cord to the extent or to the extent of almost tearing it so that it could reach him outside the booth means because he was on a wheelchair he called stephen hawking's residence where his assistant answered the call and i told him i had come in a wheelchair from india 
perhaps he thought I had propelled myself all the way. Propelled means drive or push something forward. Here it means come. To write about my travels in Britain, I had to see Professor Hawking. Even 10 minutes would do. Half an hour, he said, from 3.30 to 4. Means, the author introduced himself as someone who came all the way from India. Means, which the assistant must have taken in the literal sense that he travelled all the way from India on a wheelchair. To write about his travelling experience in Britain, the author explained that he needed to see Professor Hawking, even if it meant only for 10 minutes. But the assistant gave him a 30-minute slot from 3.30 to 4 for the next day. And suddenly, I felt weak all over, growing up disabled. You get fed up with people asking you to be brave, as if you have a courage account on which you are too lazy to draw a check. And they assume their words will motivate. Means, the author began feeling weak at that moment. He relates how one is constantly told to be brave and cheerful when you grow up being differently abled as if it were that easy. The only thing that makes you stronger is seeing somebody like you achieving something huge then you know how much is possible and you reach out further than you ever thought you could. He was just thinking in his mind that I just had to meet Stephen Hawking. Means, he mentions that people think one who is different is just lazy to draw a check on their courage account. In such a situation, the only thing that gives you courage and strength is seeing people like you do something big it is only then you know there is hope and possibility which makes you go beyond your limits and imagination i haven't been brave said his disembodied disembodied means separated from the body computer voice the next afternoon i have had no choice surely i wanted to say leaving creatively with the reality of his disintegrating body was a choice but i kept quiet means the next afternoon when he went to see him stephen hawking told him that he hadn't been brave he spoke in his disembodied computer voice that he had no other option. The author wanted to reply that leaving so creatively even with his disabilities was a brave choice. But I felt guilty every time I spoke to him, forcing him to respond. There he was tapping at the little switch in his hand, trying to find the words on his computer with the only bit of movement left to him, his long pale fingers. Means, but he refrained from doing so as his guilt took over every time he pushed Stephen Hawking to respond by talking to him. He spoke by finding the words on his computer and then tapping a little switch in his hand with the only remaining movement left in his pale and long fingers. Every so often his eyes would shut in frustrated exhaustion and sitting opposite him I could feel his anguish. Anguish means severe mental or physical pain or suffering. The mind 
buoyant buoyant means intensely active and vibrant with thoughts that came out in frozen phrases and sentences stiff as corpses means he would get easily fatigued and would shut his eyes every now and then in frustration the author mentions how he could feel hawking's pain as the thoughts in his intensely active and vibrant mind came out emotionless and stiff as a corpses or corpse a lot of people seem to think that disabled people are chronically unhappy chronically means in a persistent and recurring way i said i know that is not true myself are you often laughing inside about 3 minutes later he responded i find it amusing amusing means causing laughter and providing entertainment when people patronize me patronize means to be kind to someone but think them as inferior means the author expresses how most people think that people with different abilities are constantly sad and miserable but as far as he is talking about himself it is not true he asks hawking if he or if it was true for him or was he laughing on the inside it took hawking almost 3 minutes to respond he finds it entertaining when people are only kind to him because of his different abilities and do you find it annoying when someone like me comes and disturbs you in your work the answer flashed yes then he smiled his one way smile and i knew without being sentimental sentimental means prompted by feelings of tenderness or silly that i was looking at one of the most beautiful men in the world means the author further asks him if he feels irritated when people like him come and keep him away from his work to which he answered a firm yes after that stephen smiled his one way smile not giving into emotions but the author knew for sure that he was looking at one of the most beautiful and wonderful men in the world a first glimpse of him is shocking because he is like a still photograph as if all those pictures of him in magazines and newspapers have turned three dimensions then you see the head twisted sideways into a slump slump means sit the torso torso means upper part of the body shrunk inside the pale blue shirt and wasted wasted means weak legs you look at his eyes which can speak still and they are saying something the author mentions how the first glance of hawking startles you because he is motionless just a photograph it seems that all his photos in magazines and newspaper have become three dimensional but still as you notice him further his head is turned sideways limply and the upper part of the body is shrunk inside his dull blue shirt and legs weak his eyes appear as if they can speak they are still yet trying to speak something something huge and urgent it is hard to tell what but you are shaken because you have seen something you 
never thought could be seen means something of great significance and urgency although what they are saying is hard to explain having looked at him shakes you up completely because your eyes have something completely unexpected before you like a lantern whose walls are worn so thin you glimpse only the light inside is in condensations of a man in condensations means inner glow or light the body almost irrelevant exists only like a case made of shadows so that i no believer in eternal souls know that this is what each of us is everything else is is an accessory accessory means not important but extra though decorative means when you see him it appears as if he is like a lantern whose walls are so worn out that you only see the light inside yes before you is the inner glow of a man it makes you feel that the body is irrelevant and exists only like a case made of shadows it even makes the author a non believer in eternal souls one realizes that a man is no more than that everything else is just not important what do you think is the best thing about being disabled i had asked him earlier i don't think there is anything good about being disabled i think i said you do discover how much kindness there is in the world means the author asked stephen what according to him was the best thing about being differently abled to which hawking replied that he didn't or did not find anything good about it the author then expressed that he thinks it makes you discover that there is so much kindness in the world stephen agreed yes he said it was a disadvantage of his voice synthesizer that it could convey no inflection no shades or tone synthesizer means an electronic musical instrument typically operated by a keyboard which producing a wide variety of sound inflection means rise and fall of the voice in speaking and i could not tell how enthusiastically he agreed with me means but due to his voice synthesizer the author could not explain the excitement behind his answer as there is a disadvantage that comes with it that it conveys no inflection shade or tone every time i shifted in my chair or turned my wrist to watch the time i wanted to make every one of our 30 minutes count means the author mentions that each time he adjusted himself in his chair or had a look at his wrist watch to track time he wanted to make sure that no single minute of the meeting went wasted i felt a huge relief and exhilaration in this possibilities of my body exhilaration means a feeling of happiness or excitement how little it mattered then that i would never walk or even stand means he adds that he was relieved and happy about the limited possibilities his body had to offer in that moment it almost did not matter to the author that he would never be able to walk or even stand for that matter i told him how he had been an inspiration beyond cliche for me cliche means phrase or 
idea used so often that it loses its meaning. And surely for others, did that thought help him? No, he said, I thought how foolish I was to ask. Means, the author confessed to him how Stephen had inspired him beyond limits. And he was sure that he must have inspired a lot others. He asked if this fact made it any better for Stephen. Stephen said that it didn't. On hearing his answer, the author felt foolish for even asking such a question. When your body is a claustrophobic, claustrophobic means very small and suffocating room and the walls are growing narrower day by day, it does not do much good to know that there are people outside smiling with admiration to see you breathing still. I was so much more than happy to have met his or met this man, I could barely stop myself from grinning. Means, this is because Stephen Hawking feels when your own body is like a very small and suffocating room whose walls are getting closer day by day. The fact that people outside there are happy that you are alive does not make much of a difference for you. Is there any advice you can give disabled people something that might help make life better? They should concentrate on what they are good at. I think things like the disabled Olympics are a waste of time. Means the author asked Stephen if he would like to give a piece of advice to other differently abled people which would he or which would help make life a better easier for them. Stephen said that they should focus on their strengths and what they are good at. According to Stephen, things like Olympics for the differently abled are a waste of time. I know what you mean. I remembered the years I had spent trying to play a Spanish guitar, considerably larger than I was and how gleefully I had unstringed it one night. Gleefully means very happily. The author got the gist of what Stephen meant because he had spent years learning to play a Spanish guitar, which was larger than his own size and how he unstringed it one night very happily. And with that thought, I realized my half an hour was up. I think I have annoyed you enough. Thank you for. Stay, have some tea. I can show you the garden. Means... The 30 minutes came to an end and the author smiled as he said, I think I have annoyed you enough and continued to thank him for his time but was interrupted by Stephen who instead asked him to stay. He waited for Stephen to say something next and he offered the author some tea and a chance to show his garden. The garden was as big as a park, but Stephen Hawking covered every inch rumbling. Rumbling means a continuous deep, resonant sound. Along in his motorized wheelchair while I dodged to keep out of the way. We could not talk very much. The sun made him silent. The letters on his screen disappeared in the glare. An hour later, we were ready to leave. I didn't know what to do. I could not kiss him or cry. I touched his shoulder. Means, even though the garden was as big as park, Stephen showed him every inch and corner of it on his motorized wheelchair. 
the author tried not to come in his way they could not converse a lot during that time as the letters on his screen disappeared in the glare it felt as if the sun made him silent an hour passed and it was time to leave the author did not know what to do as he left as he could not kiss him or cry either thus he touched his shoulder and wheeled out into the summer evening i looked back i knew he was weighing though he wasn't watching him an embodiment of my bravest self the one i was moving towards the one i had believed in for so many years alone i knew that my journey was over for now means and went out into the summer evening in his wheelchair the author knew stephen was weighing when he actually wasn't as he looked back the author expresses how glancing at sifan was like looking at his bravest self the one he was moving towards and the one he had believed in for so many years he was well aware that his journey was over for now in england so this was the chapter students you have to complete your homework on the basis of the chapter explained by me and your homework is read chapter 7 that is a visit to cambridge and write word meanings mentioned in the video based on the understanding of the chapter write the answers of the questions mentioned in the book honeydew as page number 104 comprehension check question number 1 to 4 dear students you have to do these questions in your book only page number 104 and 105 working with the text question number 1 to 11 dear students you have to do these questions in your english fair notebook keep one thing in your mind comprehension check questions you have to do in your book only working with the text you have to do in your english fair notebook students you have to write the meanings of the following words in your english fair notebook and the words are number 1 gleefully number 2 inflection number 3 propelled number 4 buoyant number 5th slump still many students are not having their honeydew book with them so here in this video i have mentioned your homework in detail so let us see comprehension check which is on page number 104 question is which is the right sentence question number 1 is cambridge was my metaphor for england to the writer option number 1 is cambridge was a reputed university in england option number 2 is england was famous for cambridge option number 3 is cambridge was the real england question number 2 is the writer found stephen hawking's house option number 1 is from the nearest phone booth option number 2 is from outside a phone booth option number 3 is from inside a phone booth question number 3 is every time he spoke to the scientist the writer felt guilty because option number 1 is he wasn't sure what he wanted to ask number 2 option is he forced the scientist to use his voice synthesizer number 3 option is he was face to face with a legend question number 4 is 
I felt a huge relief in the possibilities of my body. In the given context, the highlighted words refer to option number one is shifting in the wheelchair, turning the wrist. Option number two is standing up, walking. Option number three is speaking, writing. Now let us see working with the text which is on page number 104 and 105. Question number one, part one is, did the prospect of meeting Stephen Hawking make the writer nervous? If so, why? Part two is, did he at the same time feel very excited? If so, why? Question number two is, guess the first question put to the scientist by the writer. Question number three is, Stephen Hawking said, I have had no choice. Does the writer think there was a choice? What was it? Question number fourth is, I could feel his anguish, means pain. What could be the anguish? Question number five is, what endured the scientist to the writer so that he said he was looking at one of the most beautiful men in the world? Question number six is, read aloud the description of the beautiful man which is the most beautiful sentence in the description. Question number 7 part 1 is, if the Lalton is the man, what would its walls be? Part 2 is, what is housed within the thin walls? Part 3 is, what general conclusion does the writer draw from this comparison? Question number 8 is, what is the scientist's message for the disabled. Question number ninth is why does the writer refer to the guitar incident? Which idea does it support? Question number tenth is the writer expresses his great gratitude to Stephen Hawking. What is the gratitude for? Question number eleventh is Complete the following sentences taking their appropriate parts from both the boxes below. Dear students, you have to complete this question, question number 11 in your book only. Number 1. There was his assistant on the line. Number 2. You get fed up with people asking you to be brave. Number third, there he was. Number fourth, you look at his eyes which can speak. Number fifth, it doesn't or does not do much good to know. A. Tapping at a little switching in his hand. Number two, and I told him. Number three, that there are people. Number four, as if you have a courage account. Number fifth, and they are saying something huge and urgent. B part, trying to find the words on his computer. Number two, I had come in a wheelchair from India. Number third, on which you are too lazy to draw a check. Number four, smiling with admiration to see you breathing still. Number fifth, it is hard to tell what. Students, now in this video, we shall discuss the homework solution of the homework which was assigned you in lecture number two of chapter 16, that is the conjunction. 
I have already explained to you meaning, types and uses of conjunctions in our previous video. As I assigned you homework which was to be done by you on the basis of your understanding and your homework was revise chapter 16 that is the conjunction from the book or video and based on the understanding of the topic do exercises mentioned in the book PC Renz Grammar as page number 93 exercise number 2, 3 and 4. Now let us discuss exercise number 2 in detail. Question is use these conjunctions in complete sentences. Number 1 but my brother smokes but I don't. Number 2 either or he must be either mad or drunk. Number 3 neither or neither nor. Sentences, neither Mohan nor Padma is at home. Number fourth is, whether or. Sentence is, I don't know whether he will come or not. Number fifth is, that. Sentence is, he told me that he would leave tomorrow. Number sixth word is before. Sentence is the train had departed before we reached the station. Number seventh word is how. Sentence is he asked how it had happened. Number eighth word is as. Sentence is you may do as you please. Number ninth word is unless. Sentence is you cannot catch the bus unless you run. Number 10th word is until. Sentence is, I don't go away until you promise to help me. Number 11th word is though. Sentence is, though he studied hard, he failed the examination. Number 12th word is when. Sentence is, I shall post your letters when I go out. Number 13th word is while. Sentence is, while there is life, there is hope. Number 14th word is where. Sentence is, I found my umbrella where I had left it. Number 15th word is if. Sentence is, if it rains, we shall cancel the match. Number 16th word is then. Sentence is, she is older than she looks. Now let us discuss exercise number 3 in detail. Question is, fill in the blanks with appropriate conjunctions. Number 1, be just and fear not. Number 2, I ran fast but I missed the train. Number three, make haste or else or otherwise you will be late. Number four is, unless you try, you will not succeed. Number fifth is, I am sure that he said so. Number six is, wait till I return. So, the underlined words are conjunctions or answers of the sentences. Now let us discuss the last exercise that is exercise number 4. Question is, distinguish as adverb, preposition or conjunction each of the italicized words in the following sentences. Number 1, he came before me. Here, before is preposition. Number 2, he came two hours before. Here, before is adverb. Number third is, he came before I left. Here, before is conjunction. Number fourth is, 
have you ever seen him since here since is adverb number 5th is i have not seen him since monday here since is preposition so that's all for today and this is the end of the lecture students if you like our videos then hit on the like button and don't forget to subscribe our channel thank you and have a nice day